We need to think very carefully about the competence of people in charge. Because to say that somebody has um, an ambivalent relationship with the dictionary, to say that somebody wants a word to mean one thing one day and another thing another day, uh, this is a sort of madness. Of course, I can pick up a cup or something and I can say, in my world, this is a um, balloon. And then every time I mention the word balloon, I am referring to a cup. If I'm consistent, that's perfectly reasonable. I've simply changed the meaning of a word. It's a little bit irritating. Uh, George Bernard Shaw did it. He did it mostly with, 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 with spelling. Um, people have done it. Doesn't mean they're necessarily mad. It does mean they're a little bit so nitpicky. But madness would be taking a word and making it mean one thing one day and another thing another. And that, I'm afraid, is exactly what the present government has been doing. And is it, is it responsible for all the evils in our society at the moment? No, I don't think it is. Has it intentionally gone out of its way to destroy the NHS? I think this is a, an extreme left-wing fantasy to justify the chaos, to give an explanation for the chaos. This is the sort of stuff a conspiracy theorist would hold. Simply not true. There are other explanations, an Occam's razor. You know, we don't need to look for malevolence. Stupidity is quite enough. And in fact, I would, uh, I, I, I remember a much, much more intelligent person than I saying that um, uh, they would rather face an evil man than a stupid one. And I think uh, that's perfectly reasonable. A stupid person, you never quite, you can never quite predict what they're going to do. And I'm afraid there is a lot of stupidity in the higher echelons of government, people who don't um, master their briefs before they go into a meeting, people who haven't even looked at what they're supposed to have um, decided before they go into a meeting. That is a mark of stupidity. Because you have every, every opportunity, you have the hours to prepare. And if you can't prepare, then get out of the job. Um, and, you, you know, you don't go into a classroom without having prepared a lesson. You don't go on stage without having learnt your script. Preparing for a meeting is the basis on which you do your job as a minister. And I'm targeting very specific individuals who again and again, I notice, have not done their job, have not prepared, leafing through papers in a completely... Um, uh, um, uh, speechless because they because they don't know what they're talking about because they haven't looked at the details before the meeting. Stupidity, not malice. And the same sort of stupidity I think you will find in the higher reaches of the NHS. The bureaucracy in the NHS managed by people who are monumentally stupid. No, uh, I don't think that uh, having a degree or having A-levels or uh, the equivalent of GCSEs is necessarily a mark of intelligence and it shouldn't be the only way into a job. But I think when you're looking at uh, the people who are managing the bureaucracy of a major industry like the NHS, we should begin to ask, are all those people in top executive positions equipped with a degree? Because, of course, if you want to be a doctor, you have to have a degree and you have to then go on and do further training after getting your degree. And everything has to be of quite a high quality before you're um, let loose on real patients. And with good reason. Now, of course, there's every room for an apprenticeship. A degree, after all, is simply a theoretical apprenticeship. So, yeah, I don't want, I don't want to in any way undervalue the importance of apprenticeships. But how many of those top executives in the NHS trusts have degrees and representative uh, valid degrees which are useful to their particular job now? I would like to know. Uh, and as for the meaninglessness of words. The government suffered a serious defeat yesterday, or the Cabinet Office suffered a serious defeat yesterday, and is now having to hand over 
the unredacted WhatsApp messages and the unredacted diaries of Boris Johnson. Extraordinary that Boris Johnson was quite happy to let everybody see his diaries, but I mean, you know, he'd pro probably be let happy to let everybody see his see his soiled um, lavatory paper. Uh, humiliating defeat. Well, that is Boris all over. But now the. Uh, the Cabinet Office has suffered a humiliating defeat. The opposition parties have identified that uh, and, and said that Mr Sunak was trying to dodge scrutiny. A desperate waste of time and money, says Deborah Doyle, the spokesperson for the COVID-19 bereaved families for, for Justice UK. Now, all the evidence, not just what the Cabinet Office wants to see, should be presented. And yet... The government lawyers have managed to twist the words so they mean something entirely different. So actually, if you look at the government lawyer's response today, uh, or late, rather late last night, it says, and I, and I have to read it, it's extraordinary. The inquiry is an important step to learn from the lessons, um, to learn lessons from the pandemic, and the government is cooperating in the spirit of candour and transparency. Hocum. As this judgment acknowledges, our judicial review application was valid as it raised issues over the application of the Inquiries Act 2005 uh, that have now been clarified. The court's judgment is sensible, is a sensible resolution and will mean that the inquiry chair is able to see the information she may deem relevant. But we can work together to have an arrangement that respects the privacy of individuals and ensures completely irrelevant information is returned and not retained. We will comply fully with this judgment and will now work with the inquiry team on the practical arrangements. It sounds as if the Cabinet Office has had a victory. What utter bunkum! This is words twisted. Um, this is saving face, of course. But have you noticed, I think the original application to uh, restrict uh, what Baroness Hallett saw was based on European legislation, the European Court of Human Rights um, uh, legislation, which, of course, so many people in the Conservative Party want to get rid of. The, the whole thing is an Alice in Wonderland fantasy. If you don't say... Remember Alice in Wonderland and Humpty Dumpty? Um, if you if you change the meaning of words, you change the basis on which sense is communicated. <laughs> and our present government is fast descending into a senseless babble. <laughs>